What's going on, everybody? Cigar Titan here once again with my good friend, oh, oh, brother Stokey. <laughs> Say hello to the people. <laughs> powder in my face, man. <laughs> what up, y'all? <laughs> brother Stokey, we are going to talk a little bit about size again on this episode. Yes, but we're going to get a little more specific on that, just for size. But a little double header, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. We're going to throw a review up in there, too, for you. We'll let you know who that's by and why we're reviewing it in the first place. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ready to get started? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Let's go. Hunt <laughs> tracking football. <laughs> Hey, welcome back everybody. So like we said at the beginning of the episode, we are going to be talking a little bit about cigar sizes today. And we did do a previous video on cigar sizes before. But, Maybe. but that one was more like cigar sizes and which, which you can expect with like burn time. Sure. What was the name of that video? Does size matter? That's right. <laughs> and it turns out it does. Yeah. <laughs> so before we get into uh, Cigar sizes today, we've got a couple unique sticks on the table today. You want to talk a little bit about these? Yeah, so we were gifted these from a real good friend of ours, and he is actually the owner of Burning the Burning Desire Cigar Lounge in Corona, California, and also that's right to travel back to our you know little shoot, shoot we did at yep. Citrus City Grill. He's the owner of Citrus City Grill too in Corona. So he asked us to go ahead and grab some of these and do a review for him. Honest review. An honest review. And that's that's exactly what we're gonna do because if uh, if we don't like something, we're not gonna tell you that we do. Right, you know what I'm saying? So uh, the name of this cigar is Louis the 14th. Uh, this is a five by 58, I believe. And this is a very unique blend. Uh, so you're not gonna be able to find any information for this on the websites or anything like that. This is really something that if you wanna actually experience on your own, you either have to be in the Southern California area. And I know people are going, why, why would you review a cigar that's only available in Southern California? Well, because we're actually gonna be talking about cigar sizes and everything else too. This is just kind of a bonus add-in to what we planned on doing today, isn't that right? That's right. I mean, but if you out here and you find yourself in Corona, visit the lounge, burn desire, pay with some of these, or I think you might even be able to phone in and see how you can get some yourself. So call them up, burn desire, cigar lounge, see how you can get some of these. That's right. Oh, so one tip he did tell us, he said, make sure that you smoke these with coffee. And we are doing just that. So before I before I came before we came to the headquarters, I went on and picked this up, my grande americano with oat milk. Oat milk. Oat milk, yes. I didn't even and know that was a thing. Vanilla. Hey, damn right. <laughs> Dairy free. And I got this boy. What, what, you, what, you, what you drink here? This is uh, my white chocolate mocha. I had my coffee this morning, so I figure a nice little white chocolate mocha to kind of finish off the night would be nice. I noticed that there's no peppermint in here. They, they didn't have peppermint yet, huh? And no, what I actually told her ass, a white peppermint mocha and she can put it in there. So I don't know what the hell happened. That's exactly what I told her. Okay. Well, Mine don't taste like, do you drink pumpkin spice lattes too? I do, I do. You do? Yep, they're delicious. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tis the season, right? I mean, it's All fall. Right. <laughs> Let's get lit up. Let's cut up and light up. That should be like a... That's, now, yeah, I remember. So uh, the gentleman that actually gifted these to us did mention that the tip of the cigar is actually sweetened. Oh, he did, he with, did. With, with honey. <laughs> with honey. We had a lot to drink that night. So I, I remember, it's a little foggy. And he said, he said, yeah, he tried stevia. He didn't like it. Right. He tried cane sugar. Yep. It was too sweet. So he settled with honey. So it is a sweet tip on here. So it's a yeah. sweet tip, but it's not an infused cigar. It's just the tip. All right, Italian fam. So we told you we were going to talk about cigar sizes. And the reason why we chose to do this, I was on Instagram one time and I kind of, you know, I watch their, all the personalities kind of do their live streams or whatever, and I notice a couple people that jump on. You got newbies that jump on these live streams trying to find out information. You True. know what I'm saying? So, one cigar personality said something and was kind of telling people, like, what cigar smoke? He was like, well, go smoke with Churchill, da 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 Connecticut. And I'm reading, <laughs> trying to watch all the, you know, comments rolling up, and the dude was like, a what? <laughs> so, I, so, say what? <laughs> so I was like, a what? So I was like, hey, bro, just chime in real quick. 
hey, the newbie that you asked this question for, he don't know what you're talking about. So explain who he's talking about. And then he went on to go ahead and further explain what he was talking about. So that's what we're going to get into today. So what, what are we going to start with? Well, I think when we're talking about size, uh, size is really going to be important to the cigar smoker uh, based off of a couple of factors. I mean, ultimately size is personal preference. So it depends on what that particular cigar smoker likes smoking more generally. I know Brother Stogie and I are more partial to Robusto type sizes. We'll get into that here shortly and why we enjoy those. But I think it kind of depends on the venue, maybe the amount of time that you've got uh, to spend with the cigar yeah. and how you figure or factor in what kind of a, what size you're going to be selecting. But why don't we start up at the top and we'll start off with the Churchills. Brother Stogie, what's the size, what's the typical size for your average Churchill? So, so for the Churchill, the typical size for a Churchill will be seven by 50. 50, 50 ring gauge, seven inches in length. You know what I'm saying? Seven inches, about that? Yep, that's about it. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So usually, typically, around the church hills, you usually find the Lanceros around the same length as well. That's true. That's maybe, true. Maybe a little long, maybe seven and a half. So I saw, I've seen some eight inches. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But typically, Lonsdale, Lancero, and your church hills will range you about seven inches. Right. And when you're looking at, like, so the name of the size uh, really just kind of depends on a couple of factors. It could depend on the length of the cigar or it could depend on on the diameter of the cigar. So for something like a Churchill, um, which actually gets its name from Winston Churchill, who's yes. a big fan of smoking Take these some notes. longer Take some notes. cigars. Um, you know, you're talking a little bit about the Lancero. It's roughly the same size and length, but you're looking at actually a 42 ring gauge on something like that. So it's a much thinner, so much more know. concentrated Lancero. roll of tobacco. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Got that? All right. So Brother Stogie, when you're talking about bringing the horns, let's talk about the Toro. Let's go Toro. <laughs> let's go. Oh, my kids watch that shit, right? <laughs> hey, so we're talking about the <coughs> yeah. size of the Toro. So the Toro is another size of the cigars that you know people generally smoke. And they usually range about 50 by six inches, six by 50. So a 50 inch ring gauge, six inches in length. And give or take, sometimes a Toro might give or take, maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter, but generally it's about six inches in length. So what I actually think is kind of unique when you're talking about cigars, especially those cigars that are made outside of Cuba, uh, Cuba has a very specific standard when it comes to the sizes of their cigars, you know, and they don't deviate from that. So whatever the length is means that that's exactly what the cigar is. Whereas in, you know, out here in the States or when you're getting cigars from, you know, uh, the Dominican Republic or uh, Nicaragua or Esteli or things like that, you know, the sizes tend to be a bit more fluid and there's a yeah. little bit more leeway there. Whereas if you're smoking a Cuban and it says it's a, a Cuban Robusto, then it's, it's a, a Cuban Robusto yeah. and it's a it's a five by what, 52? Yep. Yep, so there you go. Let's see, Louis the 14th. Louis the 14th. Louis, I need to Louis, get some my bad. Louis Baton. Shut up, Louis, <laughs> Louis the 14th, 10 my yeah, five minus one, okay, yeah. So fucking like Roman numerals and shit, right? All right, so Louis the 14th. So we're in the first third still. And no wonder why he said drink coffee with this. This is a mild cigar. So far, it's pretty mild. He did uh, mention when we were talking to him that he wanted to create a cigar that you could wake up first thing in the morning, grab your cup of coffee, and enjoy the cigar early in the morning. Something that wasn't going to be too heavy on your stomach if you hadn't had anything to eat yeah. or anything like that. And so far, I think it's uh, I think it's living up to that. You know, you just saw me do a quick relight on this, and we we're only probably about five to ten minutes in on the cigar, and kind of going back to cigar sizes real quick. That's why typically I prefer you know robusto to uh, Toro Corona. I like to stay within that kind of size range when smoking cigars, mm -hmm. and it's just been my personal experience. I can't speak for everybody else out there, Brother Stogie, but it's been my personal experience that when smoking bigger ring gauge cigars, you tend to have a few more issues when it comes to keeping the cigar going just because 
that particular cigar has to cover, you know, that, that cherry has to cover more ground and everything else. And keeping that lit uh, as you're going down t can be a little bit more difficult. It's not always the case though. But with the, with the bigger ring gauges, you do kind of increase your smoke time as well. You know what I'm saying? So you have something that's like a 40, 42 ring gauge, that's gonna smoke pretty quickly. Yeah, in some cases, I would agree with that. I think there are times where depending on how tightly packed you know, a particular cigar is, if you've got a loose pack on a bigger ring gauge cigar, it may burn through a little quicker. Um, and then vice versa, you know, you may have a tighter pack on something like uh, a Churchill or a Lancero or something yeah. like that. You know, and I've also run into situations where I'm smoking a cigar and I start off and it's burning through, you know, mm. you're cruising through the first half and then right when you get to that it first half, down. it slows yeah. way down. That's happened to me too. Yeah. All right, man, so cigar tight. So next we got, what, the Corona? The Corona size left? So tell me a little something about that, man. So the Coronas are a little bit smaller uh, and you'll usually get a Corona or a Petite Corona size somewhere around the five to five and a half range in length and about a 42, maybe, you know, 42 maybe, ring gauge. Yeah, you know, there may be a little bit of wiggle room there, but those tend to be, you know, smaller cigars just under that Robusto size cigar. So remember, just the whole like petite word, that just means a smaller yep. version of the Corona. That's all that is. Yep. And you'll typically get about, what, 40 to 45 minutes out of yeah. a good petite Corona cigar. Uh, those don't typically last your, you know, your hour, hour Those are those like your, uh, let's see, your Deadwood cigars. Right. You know, so your Sweet, so your Sweet James. James. Exactly. Those are your Coronas and Petit Coronas as well. And then now we, now we, now we go to our favorite now. What is the Robusto? Robusto. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the ring gauge kind of goes back up on that one. So now you're at about maybe five, five and a half inches. Sometimes maybe even like four inches on the Robusto. But for, like Most said, of the time, it's, it's usually, just, yeah. Shit is fluid, you know what I'm it's saying? It's fluid. So, but anyway, but now you go from a 42 ring gauge on the Coronas, back up to a 50 ring gauge on a Robusto. Boom, there you go. Hey, about 58 on this bad boy, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a 58, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But still a Robusto, you know what I'm saying? So, she kind of try and give you guys like a little foundation. So, when you go into the cigar lounge, you kind of know what to ask for. So, if you want, if you have like a smoke time, you kind of just want to get there, get your feet wet a little bit. Now you can put some things together. Yeah, you know? and I can already see it in the comments now where people are gonna chime in and say, you know, nope, that's not the size. This is what the size and the length and everything means. Again, that's why I mentioned, uh, you know, what we were talking about earlier with the sizes in Cuba versus anywhere literally outside of Cuba and just how fluid those sizes can be. You know, we out here in the States, you know, take liberties with everything and yeah. that goes with cigar sizes as well. So. Um, your typical Robusto size would be about a five by 50, you know, but again, just kind of depending on what the manufacturer decides they want to do or what they want to call it. There's plenty of times where I grabbed, I grabbed the smoke and I was like, oh, this is a Robusto for sure. Right. And I read the labels like, oh no, it's Corona. But no, it's a Corona, it's a Robusto. Mm -hmm. You know, so like we said, we're just trying to give you a little foundation of, you know, trying to give you some uh, some words, some, some verbiage to use. We go to the humidor so you can, you know, kind of know what they ask for. Right. So now that we've had some time to kind of get into the first third of the, as Brother Stogie called it, Louis the Fourteenth. <laughs> what are your initial thoughts? You know what? So the I got you know light coffee notes, uh, you know creamy creamy chocolate notes on a dry sniff. But as I'm actually getting to the first third of the cigar, it's like real, like a real light earthy tone, really. Very light, it's still very mild, man. I'm not getting too many flavor transitions off the cigar for me, but it's like real light earth. I'm still getting like a real creamy texture off of it. Can't really nab what that is, but it's super creamy coming off of this. Yeah, I get a little bit of the creamy taste on there as well, for sure. This is definitely what I would say would be a mild to medium so far as we're getting into it. Um, and I get a little bit of uh, that milk chocolate in there as well. When I say milk chocolate, like uh, we're not talking about like uh, a Three Musketeers bar or something like that. No, it's almost like throwing <laughs> some next quick powder in your mouth. Right. right. It's we're talking about like what the natural taste for that would be without all the sugar added and the additives and all this other stuff. So 
Um, and usually that's what we talk about too. When we're talking about like cocoa, we're talking about like the natural form of cocoa. Right. So if you find in the, your, your baking section, and you find like a cocoa bar or a cocoa bar that you will put in like a cake Where or they something. keep the cumin. I mean, exactly, <laughs> but on the other side. On the other side. <laughs> you, you got that. You got your burner, bro. I've been doing Shit. my research since the you, last man. video. You knocked my cooking ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, season is already the lemon pepper, though. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> Two points for you, bro. You but yeah, I'm talking about those basic notes. All right? Basic notes. Not high from the corn syrup notes. That's right. So, Bro Stogie and I are going to go ahead and cruise into the second, third here. We'll come back with an update here shortly. <laughs> All right. So, we're just cruising through the second, third of the cigar here, Brother Stogie. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? What are your slots? <laughs> what are your slots? <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> it's just coffee, I swear. <laughs> what did you just say? Yeah, man. So, into the second, third, like, not to me, flavor, flavor transition. I'm still getting that dry chocolate. You know, slight, real light earth tone. It really hasn't changed since the first third. And I'm actually liking that because I can enjoy my coffee and have to work with my coffee, you know, kind of messing up my palate so I won't miss those flavor transitions because they're not there. Right. But it's smooth. It is very smooth. I love it. Still mild, not medium to me. It's still very, very mild. So I not having to worry about that whole cigar drunk thing. Right. I'm digging it, man. Yeah, and I would agree. I think this cigar has been very consistent through the first and second third so far. No flavor transitions. You're still getting that creamy taste uh, off of the finish with a little bit of that milk chocolate and some coffee. And I don't know, you know, obviously we're both drinking, you know, Starbucks here. So some of that may have had something to do with it, uh, but it pairs very nicely with the cigar so far. It does. I mean, because the light coffee notes we're getting are blending in with the coffee notes from the coffee. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, boom, there you go. That's a pairing. That we is. Just, hey, we just paired. That is a pairing. Yes, sir. We, we just paired <laughs> coffee with this Lewis the 13th. You know what I'm saying? 14th. 14th. All right, yeah, you do my math right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Roman no, numerals. No, no, y'all Roman numerals, y'all. <laughs> and as you can see, there's plumes of smoke coming off of the draw, too. So you're getting a mouthful of that when you're taking in the draw off of the cigar, which is very nice. Plumes. 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 You know, plumes. What is a plume? Like, we, a smoke. Plumes of smoke? Yeah, look it up. It's in the, it's in the Webster's. Plum. <laughs> <laughs> the hell, plume. You are always trying to use a different word and shit on these video. Plumes of smoke. Let's see what this shit mean. Plumes, let's see. A plume of smoke, dust, fire, or water, the large quantity of it that rises into the air in a column. Plumes. The rising plume of black smoke could be seen all over Kabul. <laughs> the volcano's towering ash plume. So it goes, all right, okay, yep. I got you. Cigar plume. <laughs> Cigar so plume. So it's a plethora of smoke accumulating in one area is a plume of smoke. That's right. That's so hey, Brother Sogi. Yo. Something pretty exciting before we get to the end of the video. Okay. Are you We're shutting me up? Is that what that was? But it's for good reason. I thought okay. maybe we could do it halfway through this time uh -huh. and announce the winner of our cigarclub.com contest. Yes, somebody just won. That's right. Who was it? <laughs> Leo Goodman? That's the one. Leo Goodman! What the fuck you won a box? <laughs> so, Leo, go ahead and uh, reach out to us. The uh, contact email is on our YouTube webpage. Uh, go ahead and send us an email with your information. We'll pass that along to Dave Ember at CigarClub.com and we'll make sure to get your box out to you as quickly as possible. So as we pour through these plumes of smoke here, Brother Stogie, let's go ahead and get into the final third and then we'll go ahead and we'll come back with an update. Plume. <laughs> What's going on everybody, we're back. So Brother Stogie, we're winding down the final third here. I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the band. What are your final thoughts? Well, I just did a retro hail of it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I almost, almost finished the cigar while doing a retro hail. So I got nice, smooth, soft, earth tone off the retro hail. Um, it didn't burn the second time I did it. I let out too much first time I did it, you know, shit. <laughs> it got you. Again, right? <laughs> man, I'm trying to perfect my retro hell, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Time. It takes time. takes time. Shit, man. I'm like, anyway, stay in my lane, you know what I'm saying? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like nose burning. <laughs> Don't take too much through your nose. The shit burns, right? But anyway, um, same thing, man. Like, 
I'm not really getting too much of the coffee now. Now I'm just getting like a soft herb tone. Yep. As we get to the end, it's still very mild to me, and not medium. Hasn't kicked up any. My coffee is gone actually, so now I'm just enjoying just the cigar itself and the flavor notes that it has. So man, thumbs up for me, man. So as I'm winding down the last bit of uh, my third here, a lot of the same flavors. I think uh, I get a little bit of that earthy note. I still have some of those coffee notes. It's actually kind of gone up from a mild creamy type of coffee to kind of like a, what I would equate to like a medium roast black coffee that I'm getting off of the draw. I did while we were sitting here and having a little chat, had to relight it a couple of times. And again, that just kind of, and I noticed that you didn't. So sometimes it can just depend on the cigar. It can depend on how, you know. I did. Oh, did you? I did. Okay, I wasn't paying attention. I did. <laughs> it can depend on the size of your cigar. It can depend on, you know, how humidified your cigar is. There's a bunch of different factors that can go into something like that. But all in all, uh, the flavors of this cigar were really pleasant. Mm -hmm. Something that I actually enjoyed. It is getting, starting to get a little hot and squishy as I get through this. So I'll probably sit here and puff on this for another 10 minutes more before I put it down. But all in all, not a bad stick. So, but before we go, you guys probably can see here on the table that I've got uh, what looks to be a children's book on the well table. Well rounded cigar titans here, y'all. <laughs> and it is in fact a children's book and people are probably thinking, this is a cigar channel. You guys talk about cigars and whiskey and guns and all things not appropriate for those under the age of 21. But, but. We got kids or I got kids. And a lot of our cigar smokers out there have kids as well. So tell them why the hell we got a kid book on the table. That's right. So the author of this book is somebody by the name of Jacqueline Alkin. And she is a close friend of mine. She's also a sister of the Lee. And she had written a children's book recently that I thought was something pretty cool, like That's pretty very bad. spectacular. That's pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I told her, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and buy one of your books and I'll give you a shout out on the channel. So mm -hmm. for those of you guys or girls out there who have kids who are looking for a nice children's book to read to their kids, I highly recommend this book. It's called A Lovebird Named Lucy. Okay. You can actually find it on amazon.com and I'll put the link for this book down below uh, in the section where we link things down below. Uh, and I believe the book goes for about $10 on Amazon right now. So show her some love. <clears throat> that L word, right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all saw that shit? The L word. So she, yeah. so she'll, it Talk was a smoke, don't get it L twisted. Word. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> so show her some love, show her some support. Check out her book on Amazon. Go ahead, give it a try. <laughs> this guy, I swear. <laughs> Pull this shit, y'all, I'll tell you. Anyway, man, if you, hey, anybody else got some, some badass talents who are brothers and leaders or sisters and leaves and you want a cigar type to shout you out on the channel, hey man, send us something. We got emails down there in the description down there. Hit us up, send us something that you do that you might wanna, you know, to send out to our thousands and thousands yep. of subscribers and we will do it for you, man. So, pretty much. That's all we got for y'all today, man. What right? should the people do? Man, so if you are new to our channel, hit that subscribe button. Hey, if you are a beginner, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you new notification every time we our time to post a new video for y'all. Keeping it basic, y'all. Knowledge, fun, good conversation. And until next time, live how you smoke, smoke how you live. And that's smooth, baby. We'll see you guys next time.